Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, the next few videos, I want to take each section and I want to go over certain spots uh, and show you a few things uh, in those like eight measures. I want to keep these videos fairly short so you can just, we can kind of just hone in on one specific thing, cover a whole bunch of things. You can mark up your score and look at it and learn from that. So take a look at measures 13 through 20. We're going to take a look at the trombones here. I will get back to the, uh, we, we cover the introduction, but I will get back to the earlier part. It's a little tough to organize this because I see a lot of things and I want to jump around sections, but I think it's better to look at each section. And a lot of these things I say are going to apply to, you know, other parts of the chart in the same section. So let's look at page two. We're going to look at measure 13 through 20 here, right in the trombones. And I want to move right closer here so I can see the trombones. Okay, now he chose to do straight eights here. I've got about 11 points here I want to make, and I'm going to cover each one individually. Hopefully you can mark up your score, write them down, make sure you, you understand the concept of what I'm talking about here. So first off, he ends the saxes here, and he goes into a solo trumpet. Now look at the range here of the trumpet. It's fairly low. It's certainly not in the upper register. It doesn't even get out of the staff for this whole four bars here. You've got one trumpet player. It's open, by the way, and he's at forte. The trombones are at mezzo forte. So he's got one person fighting four. Trombone players tend to play possibly a little loud sometimes. I can say that because I am one. And um, I've found that in big bands, dynamics, well, certainly for real top pros, they mean something. But when you're just playing on a, uh, in, a in a gig in a club or something, dynamics generally don't matter. <laughs> at least the players don't tend to follow the dynamics as they should. I'm sure you've noticed that if you play in a big band. Okay, so he's got four against one. Now that could potentially work, um, but let's take a look at this. The first thing is that the trumpet may be too low there. Now if you got your trumpet mic'd, that'd be fine, but in reality you've got a, a weight of four against one in a low register. So these guys, if you're going to write this, these guys are going to have to be piano at least. Okay, this particular figure right here, I forgot actually to write this one down here that that articulation is generally I always write it when it's when it's forte and it's more of a you know an ensemble type of thing this is a fat like a fat uh, articulation like a bop ba da two things I see here that articulation probably should just be short staccato because the lower you get the more you really can't make it a house top you know pesante house top jazz is like real fat quarter note so uh, I would rethink that articulation. Also, this figure, the trombones, even though they see straight eights, are going to probably swing this. Bop, ba, da. Um, it's just a natural thing. It just seems to be able to be played like that. Okay, he's got some issues right here with a G major nine chord voicing. He's got G in the bass, the fifth in the third, the seventh in the second, and the ninth here. There is no third here. So I think the decision to, to make this, you know, guy down on the bottom here could possibly be re rethought out. I see what he did. He didn't want to, he didn't want to make this in close voicing here because the trumpet is low and it's going to take up those notes. So he made the decision of moving down and he has no place to go with the third. You certainly can't make the third down here. But really this chord is a D over G chord. If you see D, F sharp A, it's a triad over a bass note. So it's not G major nine. So what you're going to find is that every decision you make, every voicing decision, every you know form decision, it's going to affect the next thing. It's going to affect something. So he chose to do a solo trumpet here with a trombone background. But the problem is that that's so low, he can't really do a, a proper voicings here for the trombones. Now this won't sound terrible, in the, you know, the average listener, but if you really want it to be idiomatic and just basically lay the way you know it should be heard, then this is going to be an issue here. Like I said, that D over G, it's not a G major 9 chord. And the weight, one guy weight against four is going to be an issue. Okay, um, so he compensated a good voicing potentially in the trombones to cover, to, to make sure that that trumpet was was heard. And, I, and I'm, I'm sure he was thinking that same thing as far as, well, I can't, I can't bring the trombones up anymore because this guy's here and it's going to bury them. So so he's already on thin ice there. Uh, we talked about the straight eights. Now notice that the trombones are playing on every beat. Every beat here through four bars, except that one right there. Couple things. Why not have an eighth rest here or there, maybe in this bar? Uh, um, or even a, or not an eighth rest, but a quarter rest, or an eighth rest maybe on beat three, so you could move 
from maybe a D7 sus to a D9 to a D9 going to G major 9. So basically I would rethink all of this voicing here. Another thing here is, well, there's no place to breathe, but he does put a breath here. But why not make a natural breath and just make a tenuto quarter note there? A tenuto quarter note, guys are going to play a long quarter on beat one, an eighth rest they're going to breathe, and then they're going to play that figure there. So you don't have to put a breath mark if you write in the music the way the guy should breathe. And that's pretty much hopefully what the guys will do, but you're not, you know, you're not certain. This guy may hold over longer into beat two. Or this guy might hold over longer into beat two before he plays this figure. Okay, measure 14, the second, let's go to measure 14, let's see. Okay, it's right here. The second beat, let's look at these voicings here. A, G, C, E, okay, it's, it's an A minor seven chord there. Look at the look at beat two. He moves up to what I guess is an inversion, but when you have a player this low, this to our ears, this wants to sound like a root. So already you have a clash between what the bass player is playing and the trombone. It's really close. C I would consider to be a root. Even D sometimes comes off as a root. When you get the trombone, a bass, or a bass trombone that low, and they're not playing a root, you're going to have problems. And look at this. C, E, G, B. That's a C major 7 chord. Now certainly it kind of lines up with an A minor 9 chord because you got the 3rd, 5th. But because it's so low, it's going to sound to the listener kind of weird because they're playing a C major 7 chord there. Okay, he moves to the root there. That is a straight up D7 chord. But look what he does on the 4th beat. He moves to an A minor 7 chord again, which really is going to almost sound like, with a D in the bass, it's going to sound like a D7 sus chord, or D9 sus chord. So you see what I'm saying here? He should, what he should do is make this a D7 sus, resolve it to D7 or D9 here, and have this guy go from G to F sharp, and this guy just hold a half note. There's no reason why you can't have quarter notes in one part and half notes in another. See how his rhythm is all the same all the way across? You could have this guy moving and these guys staying the same. Or you could have this guy moving and these guys with a, with a half note. So don't always feel like, like he's got boom, boom, boom every beat. He's got to move those guys along. Okay, let's look at let's look at this measure right here. Measure 15. Take a look at the C13 sharp 11 chord. F sharp, that's the sharp 11. A, that's the 13. B, should actually be B flat. B, that's the wrong note right there. That should be B flat. So he's actually got a G major 9 chord right there. But the bass player is playing a C, so you've really got some funky clashes there. He's got to make this an E. He's got to have an E, A, B flat, and D. So I want you to see that. It's real obvious when you take a look at it. It's going to sound really weird with a C in the bass. And it's going to sound really weird with the guitar player and the piano player playing a C13 sharp 11. Okay, let's move on to the next bar. Oh, I'm moving along here, hoping you're getting all this. You might have to watch it again. Let's look at measure 16. Measure 16, he's got... A straight up close close voicing of a B minor seven flat five, which is fine. But he moves on the B three to an E thirteen. Should actually be E thirteen flat nine. But take a look. There's no G sharp. He did not resolve. He did not resolve the seventh of the B minor seven flat five to the third of E thirteen, oh, which should be E probably seven flat nine. Now let's look it up here in the saxes. I'll get to the saxes in another video. F A B D F. No resolution there. He's still on a B minor 7 flat 5 chord. So there's going to be some serious clashes there because the rhythm section is going to go, oh, it's an E13 chord. Boom, I'm playing that. The bass player's sitting on an E. You're going to have some real clashes between the 7th and the 3rd of what they're playing down here. Okay, so I hope you got those. Let's move on. Let's go to the next page. Measure 16. Oh, let's go back. Let's see if I can go back. Okay, I guess I covered that. So let's move on. Measure 17. Okay, let's look at the um, trombones here as we were we were before. We're just moving on. So we're covering eight bars here. Okay, he's kind of got a close voicing, A minor 9. Looks fine. One thing that I might do to create some inner voice movement is have this guy play a B on beat 1, moving to an A on beat 2. So you get a little crunch there, and then it resolves. It's almost like an accented passing tone. Here's another spot where you might want to put in a suspended chord, so you can delay that resolution to beat 4. Or you might want to make, I didn't want to get into this, but look at the bass. You might, because this goes D7 flat 9 to B7, you might want to have the bass player walk down to C to B. I mean, he does have an F sharp to a B, which is a fifth movement, but a bass player may just walk that down if he sees D7 flat 9 to B9. He might walk it down. So you actually have on the fourth beat D7 flat 9 over C. 
but it is kind of a passing uh, moment, so it's no big deal. This is a spot, another spot where maybe he would want a one quarter, a quarter rest on beat one, and then have the guys come in on beat two. So rather than have this guy go da da da, he could go rest da da da. It sounds very uh, simple, and it is simple, I guess. But but uh, it's something to think about, and that's the thing I talked about having everybody playing on every beat. Okay, so he's got B minor seven. Uh, here he has a little rhythm here with the E minor seven. I hear the last thing we'll cover right here. Look at this A minor eleven. He's got A minor 11, but he's got an E minor 7 voice in the trombones. But the bass trombone player goes from a root, jumps all the way up to a 6th to play the 3rd. And he's got F sharp, B, C, and E flat. So it's a little awkward to do that, to be honest. He should probably have this guy play a C, this guy play a B, and this guy play a G. So, so he, can, he can go uh, B, B, B here. And you don't have that root to the third movement there. And the last thing I want to cover, and then I'll wrap this up until the next one. Whoops. I mean, the last thing is right here. Check it out. He has a third there, and it resolves to the root. So he's got a G against an F sharp, which is a little clash, which is fine. But it's a little strange to have the bass trombone above the third trombone. It's not criminal, you know. But it is a G major 7 chord, and he should reflect that in the chords here. Personally, I would maybe have this guy go to A, Look at the leap here when he doesn't have to do that. He could have this guy stay on an F sharp and this guy go to A, and the voice leading wouldn't be as, uh, he wouldn't have as much voice leading there. A drop of a second is probably better than a drop of a fourth. Okay, so I hope you got all that, and I know I ran through it real quick, but I want to make these 10 minutes or less for sure. So hopefully this will come in at less than 10 minutes. So we'll see you next time, and we'll cover another part. <laughs>